diagnosis of a brain tumor is probably one of the most frightening conversations that you can have with your doctor because we don't know a lot of people walking around years and years later after a diagnosis of brain cancer because of the traditional treatments just do not work that well. Their survival is measured in months instead of years. We have found though that the brain is just filled with CB1 and CB2 receptors, especially CB1 receptors. So if your tumor is within your brain, you have a lot to target with cannabinoid therapy. So it's very, very hopeful. We've had many people who have been in hospice, who come out of hospice after beginning cannabis treatment because all of a sudden the cancer cells that were growing out of control stop and start reversing that train tra and going the other way and start, and start shrinking. So I would like anything else. In this case, I would start out with a ratio of closer to three to one of THC to CBD in, in treating a brain tumor. And I would look at, at this being, getting that dose up as high as you can, as quickly as you can. Uh, the receptors are there now. Having said that, there is uh, one that's called DIPG. And DIPG is in the brain stem. And unfortunately, there just are not the CB1 receptors for the cannabinoids to activate in the brain stem. So it can be a lot more devastating. And even with that diagnosis though, we have found extended life and far, far greater quality of life when treating it with traditional medicine along with cannabinoids. Oftentimes when uh, oncologists are talking about life expectancy, when it comes to brain tumors, they're measuring it in months. They'll say, we're gonna put you through this rigorous uh, treatment and we are going to give you all these things and yes you're gonna feel miserable and you're gonna be in pain and you're gonna be vomiting and you're gonna go bald but you're gonna live two months longer and so then you're faced with is this really a tr uh, the two months that I want am I willing to pay the price for that or am I willing to just go home and uh, and live my life kiss my wife kiss my husband kiss my children and and uh, be done Cannabis is a phenomenal option. We found in preclinical research, uh, working out of Spain, that cannabinoids, THC in particular, does an amazing job of killing brain cancer cells. Uh, we have phenomenal success with glioblastoma multi multiforme, which is the same as if you have like an astrocytoma stage four, so that's also a GBM. A GBM is really any brain tumor that has, uh, that has it's over 50% of all brain tumors. We do treat them all the same though. We do treat them with a three to one ratio initially of THC to CBD. The dose is what's very different based upon the individual patient, the individual case, and tolerance and ability to take the medicine and still have quality of life. Because at the end of the day, that is what is most important, is that you're using this, but you're not in fact debilitated by the cannabis therapies. We also know that if the three to one ratio is not working, for you and you've tried it and you've gone through your scan periods and you've gotten up to what the doctor and you have determined is a therapeutic dose, there is still hope because you can flip that to a one to three ratio. I wouldn't suggest that you start out at that point with the higher CBD and the lower THC because we know how to target those receptors directly. But if you're not having success because every cancer is different, then you can flip that ratio. I do recommend that you work with your doctor to come up with a dose that's effective for you. If your doctor doesn't know, then you contact, you look at Greenflower Media, which is what you're doing right now, which is smart because they have a lot of experts they've pulled together who understand how to treat these different diseases. Now oftentimes people who have brain tumors end up experiencing seizures as a result of either the location of the brain tumor 
or the radiation that they have to treat it, in which case you also need to then treat to avoid having more seizures with some of the, uh, sometimes more CBD. You still, you have to have some THC for that. You have to look at the raw cannabinoids such as THCA, which is what you have before you heat the, the, the plant and it's in its raw form. And this can be extremely effective in mitigating uh, seizure, dis seizures. So not only are you faced with the cancer treatment, but then you also have to also address the side effects from the treatments or from the location of the tumor, which you can do with some of the raw cannabinoids. Cannabis is very beneficial when you're treating brain tumors. It can work along with your standards of care with chemotherapy and radiation and make them work more effectively. In fact, there's research that shows that when you put THC along with TMZ, which is a first line treatment for brain tumors, that both of them work 50% better than they work alone. So that's very hopeful. Uh, it will also work very effectively to manage the side effects of the chemotherapy and radiation, uh, including the option in case you have seizures, because seizures are often a side effect of the placement of the tumor within your brain and also from the radiation that people receive to treat, the, to kill the cancer and to shrink the tumors. So in either case, cannabis is very effective to help with the mitigation of, of side effects and the cancer. There is no such thing as a cure. There is no cure, and if somebody says there is, run as fast as you can the other way. Cancer is a chronic, systemic disease and has to be treated that way. It's not something that happens to you from the outside like the common cold and that you get over it and you'll never get that type of cold again. It's something that's in you and has to be treated and has to be managed. Once you finish your treatment and you've gotten to a point where you have no evidence of disease or it's, they can't tell on the scans whether it's scarring or tumor and you're at that point, you can go to a maintenance dose over time, slowly get to a maintenance dose, but you're gonna have to remain on that, on that on that maintenance dose indefinitely because it is going to still be in your body and when our evidence shows that when people stop then over time the, the, the tumors do return.